Morning, everyone. Nice clear sky, relatively. Some very high wispy clouds. I see a contrail coming out of the back of a jet. It is very high. No, we're not being dusted with something. Jets make contrails. Now, there may be something in these occasionally that the government decides to do, but that's a lot of conspiracy theory that I can't back up. But anyhow, it's a pleasant day. I'll tack a little bit at the end, just showing what the lake looks like first thing in the morning. All right. One of the problems that we have trying to talk about Jesus in the Bible in this current age is everybody's got a rebuttal. The Bible's not accurate. It's We don't know who wrote it. Um, it's full of lies. Let me get my camera adjusted here. Uh, it's full of errors. Everything you can think of, they've got an excuse for. They're going to say, well, there's all kinds of er errors in the Bible. Okay, well, ask one of them to list any of them. They won't give you anything significant if they do. There's minor things, yes, but nothing major and certainly nothing to affect the Gospels. Well, they're going to say, well, we don't know who wrote the Gospels. Well, we do to a degree, but we weren't looking over their shoulders, so they can't. It's, it's, some of it's going to get down to faith, and they don't want to believe, so they're going to come up with 20 million excuses. But we know Jesus existed. He's not only in the Bible, but he's also in the Quran. Not as the same type of person. He's just a prophet in the Quran. He's the son of God, in, or God, if, however you want to look at it, in the Bible. But we have historical evidence from non-biblical times, or people. Uh, Josephus was there in Jerusalem and kept a log of everything. His primary purpose was just to document what the government was doing, uh, Herod and, and the rest. Herod wanted his name to go down in history. Well, it has, but not the way he wanted it. And in Rome, there was uh, Tacitus, I think his name was. He was a Roman senator, and he kept tabs and wrote about Pilate. So we've got non-biblical evidence to back all this stuff up. Nothing short of them standing before God is going to convince them because they don't want to believe. They want to go on with their life, continue doing the things they're doing. They're probably successful enough. They don't think they need God. And they probably don't on this world, on this planet. They need him for going forward because without it, this is their end of their life. But a lot of them believe that's all it is. A lot of our rich people and our scientists, some of them that have studied all this stuff, are really into the world and the solar systems and the galaxies. I showed you a picture of Mercury. We are very insignificant in this solar system, and yet God loves us, so we've got that to go on. So what else do we have? What other proof do we have that the Jews own the area? God gave it to them. Other than the Bible, we can look at when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Uh, there's a couple of other books that are not in the Bible, the book of the Maccabees, uh, that talked about the revolt. Why did Jesus pick this time to come to the earth, Roman occupation? Because one of their chief inventions is the crucifixion. For him to be crucified, being put before the court of Rome would pretty much guarantee it if he's, quote, bad enough in their eyes. Pilate washed his hands of it because he said, look, I can't find anything wrong with him. I'll give you Barabbas. And of course, the instigators in the crowd, and we see them today when there's riots or when there's marches going on and we see people start instigating and then it turns into a riot and there's fires. There are people planted. They're planted by people from earth right now that are paying them to be there. But these people are working for Satan and they don't know it or don't care. 
But back then they had instigators that were also there to get the crowd stirred up. We want Barabbas. I mean, if you've seen The Robe or any of the other movies, the period movies that they made a number of years ago, you kind of get an idea of it. They're, you know, they're Hollywood. If you've seen the Ten Commandments, um, I don't believe the water parted the way Charlton Heston did it, but, and I don't think Moses looks like Charlton Heston, but it's Hollywood. Enjoy it and kind of get an image in your mind. They're out here working around the place. They've got people coming out and measuring. I don't know if they're getting ready to take care of it. They're getting quotes for the grass to be cut. I don't know. They're looking at all kinds of stuff. Probably come in and just do some general maintenance. The states look after us right now. I don't care for the federal government, but most states, at least good states, and Georgia's in that, take care of their, their state property, at least the state parks. All right, so when you're trying to talk to people, you're not going to be able to convince them. We can't convince anybody that God exists. If they're that far gone, there's nothing you can do. And it's not your job to save people anyway. When the Holy Spirit works on them, if somebody's praying for them to save this person, their life's going to turn upside down. They're going to look for God, say, help. And maybe you can be there to help. You've got to have a little knowledge to help with, but maybe you can be there. And again, we are witnesses. We're witnesses of what we've seen and heard. Now, we haven't seen Jesus, but maybe we've seen miracles. Maybe we've seen people turn their lives around. Maybe we've been in the same situation that the person that we're talking to has been in. Whatever it is, alcoholism, whatever, drugs, it, it could be anything. Any major sin that would drive them to God when they find themselves in trouble. And we don't have to be like the song, when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother, Mother Mary comes to me speaking words of wisdom. That's a song, of course. It's not biblical. But at least it's got r religious connotations. So you got you got a basis to start talking to people. If they just don't believe in God or don't believe in Jesus or the Bible, all you can do is tell them what you've learned from it and maybe plant some seeds for later on. Most people have to get grovel in the gutter before they're ready to crawl out. am I doing on time? Lots of time. I just kind of wanted to talk about this because I've been talking to people and I throw out um, comments. You know I'm kind of a, a joker to a degree. I, I love my funny memes and comics and stuff. And I'll throw out something funny that has a religious connotation to it. And I'll find out whether or not the person's open to even talk about it. You gotta have some kind of an opening line. And I was on set, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I was on set and there was a guy that was supposed to climb up into a, a lift, take him up, and the director said, grip the, the railing really tight and look worried. You don't wanna be, you don't like heights or whatever. And I standing next to him, I said, it'd be funny if he could do the sign of the cross before he got up there. And he'd go, yeah, that is funny, but you know how Hollywood is. They don't want anything to do with Jesus. That's the problem. As long as I can stay in areas that are isolated from the true Hollywood, I don't mind working. And as long as I'm doing parts that are benign, if you will. Um, I was a stand-in, so you won't see me on camera in this show, so I'm not even gonna tell you what it is. I'm not supposed to anyway. But the bottom line is, I'm not taking a lot of work because I don't like the jobs, the production company. If it's Disney, I don't like it. Um, these are local here to Georgia, so I can uh, work for these when, I, when they come up. 
I just had to turn down six days of good work <clears throat> because if you can't make one, you can't make them all, he said. Well, I couldn't make the first day because that was when I had my doctor's appointment. So anyhow, I've now established myself uh, at the Carrollton VA. If you're in that area, you need to check it out if you've never been to a VA clinic. The hospital is in one location, that's in Claremont, which is north of Atlanta. But it can be busy, it can be sad, because there's a lot of veterans in there that are in there that don't have a whole lot going for them in their life. Be a good place for ministry if you wanted to do that. But for those of us that are still veterans and don't want to travel that far, because it is over 50 miles for me, then you find a clinic. And some clinics are better than others. Um, the Carrollton one in Carrollton, Georgia is a brand new clinic, relatively. It looks, it's a bright new shiny building. Everything inside is new. They've got their own x-ray equipment, so I you know, don't have to go someplace else to get an x-ray. So I did that, they already x-rayed my knee. Now I gotta call and set up an appointment so they can make me jump through a few hoops. Well, I gotta do some therapy on it, try to strengthen it before we do the surgery. And I agree with that, so I'll, I'll do that. So that's the diagnosis for the, for the week I told you to pray about. So I was very pleased to go in there and, and be treated. Um, it is really getting dangerous. We're on the threshold. Iran has threatened to retaliate against the United States if we attack any of their interests. But they didn't mention their proxies, so I think we're okay. Still firing at the Houthis. All these people are doing are making everybody use up their ammunition. And they've been stockpiling it for years. They've got thousands of missiles. And for every one they shoot that's going to be in a targetable area, they have to shoot it down. And eventually they're going to run out. The United States just said, Israel's not doing what we're telling them to do. They're a sovereign country and they can do whatever they please. But our government doesn't like not being in control, especially our fearless leader. So they threaten to stop or delay replenishment of materials, arms, and that. The United States is doomed. We don't have a chance to survive what the wrath of God's going to throw here. So just hope we get out of here before he does. But I would suspect things are going to start getting bad before that. We're already seeing that. We're real close to a civil war. Half the states are telling the federal government to leave us alone. We have state rights. And the federal government is ignoring the Constitution and its legal responsibility to protect the states and their borders is refusing to do so. That's a constitutional challenge that even the United States Supreme Court is not willing to get in the middle of right now. And I don't know why. They may be getting private phone calls saying, we'll take you and your family and throw them in the ocean. We don't know what these despicable people that are running things are doing. But when people stop doing what they're told by this despicable group, then you're going to start seeing retaliation. People are going to start dying. I told you about Lincoln last time. We've had presidents assassinated before by people that we never found out who they were, which means they're very high and connected in the government for us to never find out who they were. We think we've gotten some information afterwards, but deathbed confessions aren't necessarily true, especially if the people they're talking about are already dead too. Keep prepping, keep preaching. Tell as many people as you can, make it your first priority. After God, family, then get out there and share. because we're running out of time very fast. Uh, it's a quiet day. The wind has finally died down. It's cool, but there's no wind, which 
takes 10 degrees off the temperature. So if it's 40, it's 30. Because the wind's either nothing, like it is now, or it's, you know, 10, 20, 30 miles an hour. If there's a storm passing, it might get up to 50. My tents already tried to buckle a couple of times when one of the storms went by. I had to add some more rope. We're having issues with Thomas's uh, benefits that we're trying to keep him getting. We got him some benefits and then they turned it off. And it's like, why? Well, we tried to talk to reach you and you didn't answer, so we turned him off. Why would the government be so stupid to do that? Because they don't hire good people. I'm not talking if you're the one good person who works for the government. I'm not singling you out. But the majority aren't. They can't find work anyplace else that pays as well and has the benefits, so they take government work. But they're not capable. And there's nobody watching over them properly. Our government right now is it's getting to where it's not fixable. You'd have to replace everybody in government. We're just a few months away from a, quote, election, which I say is never going to happen. Something's going to stop it. They're either going to dump Biden and bring somebody else in, but I can't think of anybody who would have the option to beat Trump at this point in time. He's beaten all the polls everywhere. He's so high in the polls that even the Republicans who didn't want him to run have no choice but to put him on the ballot. All right. I'm going to make this a little shorter than normal. It's 17 minutes. That's good enough. Sometimes if I make them too long, the amount of minutes that get viewed is pretty much the same as if I make them short. And I thank those who keep supporting me in prayers. I love your comments. The trolls I don't care about, but I, the more trolls hit me, the more I think I'm doing good, so I don't mind them either. I block them eventually, but I love trolls too. That means I'm doing a good job. And for those that helped uh, with my fundraiser, it's close to being over, but I'm I'm well over halfway, so I can get the majority of the work done. I'd like to finish it, so if you can contribute, look to the description below for the fundraiser. I'm sorry I've only got PayPal and, and I got Patreon. Um, you can do the thanks button. I think YouTube takes more money out than PayPal. Uh, they're all, they all charge a fee. If I send money for, through um, Western Union, they charge a fee. The only way you can give me money directly would be to meet me in a dark alley with an envelope full of funds and then maybe we can exchange it. It's just the price of doing business. I, I'm sorry for that. Um, I don't have my own web page. If I did, I could put a fundraising button on there and collect everything directly. But I don't, you know, I don't, it's just me. This is a one man operation. I don't have a team working for me. Mainly because I'm traveling so much all the time, I couldn't get anybody to follow me around. I might be able to work with somebody remotely. But who do you know that you can trust that can do all this stuff? I don't know. I wouldn't mind having a website, but then you gotta you gotta pay to put it up there and you gotta edit it and do all this stuff. I can't afford all that. I've done it before in the past and it's a lot of work. I couldn't have the time to do the messages if I did that. All right, I filled up another minute and a half, so be safe, everybody. Don't be frightened by what's going on. We were warned about it. God knows what's happening, and Satan is beginning to get close to his 15 minutes of fame. That's all he's going to get. Till we meet in the clouds. God bless. It's morning on the lake. There's some squirrels out. I don't know where the birds are.